my focus in being in the digital world has always been MVP, minimum viable product. From the startup days to now working within a large ecosystem of David's Bridal and the Bridal world, it's constantly how do we test and learn, test and learn. And this pandemic has forced us to do that at a very rapid pace. And there's a lot of good things that come from that. You know, you can learn that we can invest very little and learn something and decide to do it or not. But at the same time, testing constantly, changing initiatives constantly on teams can be, can be hard. And so how do you protect burnout from your own team? You're listening to Retail Remix, your inside access to candid conversations with the people shaping retail's future. Here's your host, Alicia Esposito. Well, folks, it's official. We are a few weeks out from Retail X at this point. But I have to say, the event is a content gift that keeps on giving. And this week's episode is testament to that fact. At the show, Lizzie Ellingson, Chief Digital Experience Officer for David's Bridal, spoke about the company's implementation of augmented reality. But I have to say, AR is just one piece of a very fascinating customer experience puzzle. During the show, I had the chance to sit down with Lizzie to get the entire picture, how the brand had to adapt and pivot in light of the pandemic, how the wedding industry has changed and will continue to change, and how that is guiding David's bridal's overall approach to omnichannel education, engagement, and ultimately, customer loyalty. Listen in to get her take. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another special episode of the Retail Remix podcast. You know me, I'm Alicia Esposito, and I have with me today, live from the Retail X show floor, Lizzie Ellingston, Chief Digital Experience Officer of David's Bridal. Lizzie, thanks for taking the time. Thanks for having me. So... David's Bridal, a very well-known brand, beloved brand. I actually got my wedding dress from there myself. Amazing. (laughs) Um, But before we get into how the brand has evolved, the new things going on, I want to talk about your title because, like I said, very known brand, but a very cool, honestly, a title I've never heard of before. So why don't you talk a little bit about what your role entails? Sure thing. So it's a new role. So Chief Digital Experience Officer. I head up the entire digital group. A lot of different factions of that group. That includes UX, UI, head of product, digital solutions, which is a new group we just built that helps bridge the gap between the digital solutions in store and online. Really, we touch every single digital touch point throughout the customer journey and really making sure that the experience is the best in class. It's a new group. We headed it up two years ago and through the pandemic have been hitting the ground running and it's been really quite exciting for what we've been able to build. That's excellent. So I do have to ask, the big elephant in the room is obviously the past 18 months. That is life. And it's interesting because, you know, shopping for formal wear, bridesmaids dresses, wedding dresses, very considered process. You have the Pinterest board, social media, so many different channels. Takes a lot of time, sometimes overthinking. I know I did it. But I have to ask, how has this process evolved, if at all, over the past 18 months? Because maybe weddings have been postponed, pushed back. Sure. What what changes exist for you? You know, there's been a lot of changes. I would say, first and foremost, right before the pandemic, we started investing in some planning tools. So the whole theory and strategy was how could we capture a user earlier in her journey? And typically, a bride starts to look for her gown between nine to six months before her event date. So how could we capture her before that, 12 to 14 months when she's starting to think about planning? Maybe she's not engaged yet or she's going to be. So we build a set of tools called the Wedding Vision Board where she can enter in a couple different entries about what she wants her wedding to look like and then it spits out this beautiful board that really recreates maybe what her wedding could be and people have found that very helpful. And then beyond that, we have a wedding checklist, Blueprint Registry, which is a registry tool and a website builder. So a lot of investment has been made in the planning side. So really, how do we capture them and and, and give them some guidance into that planning journey? But then as the pandemic hit, we definitely shifted a lot of our focus as a company. How can we think digitally first? It's the first time in our 70 year history where all 300 stores were closed. And I know a lot of other retailers had similar situations, but it forced us to be very creative very quickly and invest in different types of tools. Yeah. So can you dig into some of those examples? Because I'm sure more people are at home, they're scrolling through social media, stores shut down for a lot of retailers. So how did you pivot and what 
I guess, tech or even just at the strategic level, what ended up proving especially valuable for the Davis Brett Albert? Yeah, absolutely. So we look at four different pillars. We look at one, how can we inspire? How can we drive collaboration? How can we increase shoppability and buying? And then the lifetime value. So kind of first and foremost, inspiration, talked about the planning tools. We really have invested in that. How do we make that a forefront? From a collaboration and shoppability, we looked at a couple different avenues. One was AR, augmented reality, and 3D. We were actually the first ever bridal retailer brand or a garment brand to introduce AR versions of our dresses. We launched that back in September of last year, partnered with a group called Vertebrae and it's been amazing, the reaction from it. You can look at an extreme detail of the dress and you can project it right in your room. You can take a photo side by side, you could send it to your mom, see what she thinks. And having that kind of bridge between the in-store experience and the digital experience is really helpful and how can we continue to do that? And really at the end of the day, it's about confidence, right? Can we drive confidence to have somebody purchase online? Or in our business, driving somebody to store is still very helpful because we're one of the last industries where people still really want to try it on and they want to touch it or feel it or see it in person. And so how can we instill confidence in every decision that they do? And then the last thing that we have been focusing on is lifetime value. And so we introduced our first ever loyalty program back in December of 2020, and it's called Diamond by David's Bridal. And we flipped the fact of loyalty on its head a little bit, where it's not a one-to-one -one where I gain points for every purchase I make, which we do have that, but the idea is that you can share your loyalty number with all your friends and family. Say, oh. go buy a dress at David's Bridal. Okay. Use my loyalty number. I'll give you $20 off, yep. and then I get those points. So and what smart. happened? It's so smart, and it's it's very similar to a registry item where people can pull together. They're buying a dress for your wedding, and then they're giving you points. And at the end, with the three different tiers that we have, they can actually earn a free honeymoon, which is really really neat. Wow! Yeah, and we've had I thirty winners idea. so far. It's really cool. People have gone to Jamaica, Myrtle Beach. It's been awesome, and a really unique way to think about loyalty and how you're driving loyalty not only for the brand but also for the bride and groom and helping their dreams come true. Right, because I know when we talk about loyalty and how loyalty programs need to change, it has to be more of like a strategy versus just a one-off thing. They just kind of tack on to everything else. It's all about the value exchange, right? Like what does the retailer get or the brand get and what does the consumer get? But in this case, it's almost like a web of benefits, right? Because I've been in weddings in addition to hosting my own wedding and there's the cost, the complexity. So like, how can you eliminate that friction for everyone and benefit everyone? Yeah, and then as a bridesmaid or a mother of the bride or mother of the groom or being just a friend, you feel like you're giving not only more than just buying a dress, right? You're giving them points to help contribute towards all these great offerings at different levels. Yeah, that's yeah. fascinating. So I do want to dig into AR because obviously it's been such a hot topic. A lot of brands across categories trying to embrace it, integrate it into their e-commerce experiences. What was the, I guess, consideration process for you? I mean, hearing it from you, hearing why you did it, it makes total sense, I think, for the David's Bridal brand, but were there any key questions you asked to determine, like, is AR the right solution or can we achieve this through other means? Like, I'm always curious to hear what that process is like for companies. Yeah, it's, it's a great question. So I would say in 2020, beginning of 2020, we had AR on a roadmap for the beginning of 2021. As soon as the pandemic started to hit in really March when we were closing most of our stores, we quickly shifted that up knowing that we need a bridge between that in-store solution and the digital because we were driving everybody to our digital solution, which was helping us and keeping us at bay. Through that process, we also launched virtual stylists. So stylists in-store, they're key. They really help drive what could fit well on somebody's body type, what kind of fabric would look really great on them. And so we have this virtual styles program that's now live where they can bring dresses up to the screen, but there's still not that interactivity where you can see how it lays. And so we were missing that key part. And that's where we started to invest in AR and 3D. And so that's where we started to look at other providers that did that. Vertebrae ended up winning out for us because their level of detail is so strong. It was less about the try-on form because that technology just isn't there yet. You know, there's a couple people that are doing it. And they're doing it okay for hats, glasses. Really, facial recognition does it very well. But body formats, they're also different. It's really hard to manipulate that. So we looked at how do we get the detail of the dress to be the best in class. 
And so that's where we landed with them, where they do photogrammetry, 300 photos stitched together to have this beautiful 3D rendering. And then you can project it and go right in, you can walk in, you can look at the detail, you can zoom in, you can walk around it, see how the train lays, it's really cool. Yeah, no, it, it's incredible seeing it all come to life. But I mean, how does that kind of integrate into your e-commerce or digital experience, right? Because there's the actually experiencing the technology, which again is incredible, but how do you drive awareness around you know, this thing is available? How do you educate people? How to use it and get the most value? What does that full funnel, I guess you could say, look like? Yeah, because you you want to build something, but you can't just build it and nobody right. will come, right? You <laughs> have no to throw some marketing it. behind it. So before we launched, we invested in adding stories to our homepage. We have a targeted landing page that explains how to use the product that has animated GIFs, videos, you know, because our user group is from anywhere from 18 to 80, right? And we want them to use this. It was from bridal gowns all the way down to mother of the bride gowns. And we want to allow them to project it into their space. So it was a lot about education. How can we educate them? But really the numbers don't lie. If somebody interacted with our VR or, or sorry, AR and 3D tool, we found that we saw a 30% lift in revenue on those specific SKUs. And we saw a 200% lift on creating an appointment in store. So it was really providing context to us that this is helping them drive confidence. They're seeing the product in images, maybe a, a quick video, but this AR3 tool, once they interact with it, they are two times more likely to make an appointment with us. Which once they get in our stores, we can convert them. Yeah, that's actually really valuable, especially in context of now, right? Because people are being a bit more careful or considered about when they go to the store, they want to make sure that they're planned and they have like a process in place. Exactly. And especially for wedding dress shopping, exactly. right? And we have limited amount of appointments now because they're longer. We're cleaning the dresses after each try on, you know, a lot of sanitation going on, which is fantastic, but limited. And so how do we continue to drive people to store to make sure that they can try on dresses that are perfect? for them. It's fantastic. So you've made a lot of moves, a lot of investments in all of your different stages of the engagement and researching process. Obviously, the AR investment has been a huge success, which is always great to hear. Um, curious about any lessons learned or, or any new findings, because I, I think in a reoccurring theme in the conversations that I've had over the past year is that things are constantly changing. Obviously, there's a need to be flexible or agile, whatever you want to call it but there's always, that decision making needs to be rooted in, in the customer. So what have you learned from them and what changes are you implementing as a result of those learnings? Yeah, I mean, I think my focus in being in the digital world has always been MVP, minimum viable product. From the startup days to now working within a large ecosystem of David's Bridal and the Bridal world, it's constantly, how do we test and learn, test and learn? And this pandemic has forced us to do that at a very rapid pace. And there's a lot of good things that come, come from that. You know, you can learn that we can invest very little and learn something and decide to do it or not. But at the same time, testing constantly, changing initiatives constantly on teams can be, can be hard. And so how do you protect burnout from your own team? And that's something I, I think that we've learned a lot is that you need to work at a rapid pace that it's exciting, but you also have to keep everybody involved and allow them to have that time. And that's been, culture's a really important part of David's Bridal and the digital team, the IT team, and I think we've done a really good job of setting those boundaries to make sure that we're working at a fast clip, but able to protect our team from making sure that they're working at a, a fluid but uh, pace that is helpful for them yeah. and their lifestyle. That's actually something I never really thought of, and it's probably ignorant of me, but like everyone's talking about fail fast, move fast, just get it out the door. But I could imagine if your development cycles are so rapid and there's not like that second to cool off, discuss, learn, and then figure out a plan, it could probably get discouraging, right? Especially in like a digital space where sure. like there's so much stuff going on. Yeah, and I think it's just the culture that we're in right now as, as a world. We're all trying to innovate as quickly as possible to keep our brands relevant, to tackle what everybody's going through within this pandemic, and then how to take advantage of opportunities. Yeah. And in doing so, you know, how do you do it in a way that's scalable for your team, but also your company? Yeah, yeah, it's been really interesting. So, so with that, I mean, are there any other trends, tech that you're kind of keeping your eye on, you're waiting to see what's happening or you're planning to invest? I don't know, I'm sure you can't share like your product roadmap <laughs> yeah. or anything, but, but I mean, what's exciting you right now? Yeah, so two things are exciting me right now. Personalization, so how do you personalize each experience? It's not new but there's a lot more technologies out there than there were even a year ago. 
how do you drive experiences from your e-commerce site all the way down to your store that really capture who this user is. They feel like they have somebody guiding them the entire way. That's really unique. And specifically with our industries, because we drive towards appointments and we have people help helping them in store rather than just them shopping by themselves, you know, how can we have this personalization effect to make them feel like they're part of our family? And so that's something that we're driving into. And then lastly is collaboration. The digital world, collaboration's been really hard. You have the Pinterest of the world where that's kind of the first touch of collaboration, you know, back in 2010 to now, or 2008 was when I launched. But Really what we're looking at is how can we take collaboration from what we see in store where you bring your mom, you bring your friend, you try on a dress, you try on a shirt, and you say, how does this look on me? Oh, you know, this looks great, or maybe it doesn't lay right on you. How do we do that in a digital space? And that's something that we're really excited about, starting to invest in, and more to come. Yeah, definitely has a lot of room for some really cool things, so we'll be keeping an eye out. But before I let you go, Lizzie, I always like to have my guests share any lessons or takeaways, because it's been such a time of learning, probably more so than we've experienced in retail, and it's, it's always a cycle of learning, I think, in this space, which is why it's so exciting. But any closing lessons, even recommendations for the folks listening right now that are trying to navigate this new digitally driven space, maybe not sure where to place their bets, what has helped you? I think it's reading your user data, seeing where there's opportunities, and like I had mentioned before, test as much as you can, but without burnout, and do it in a way that's sustainable. It doesn't have to be perfect, and I think we're all living in an imperfect world. In digital, it's, it's great to test things. A-B test, you know, different even button styling. That's a simple, simple solution, but that could drive you know, small incremental gains. And that's what I tell all of my colleagues, but also people in other industries, is constantly test, because you'll learn a lot. Well, Lizzie, thank you again so much for taking the time out. I know these shows are always crazy packed with appointments and sessions, so thank you again so much for taking the time. Of course, thanks for having me. And to all of you, thank you for listening to this special episode of the Retail Remix podcast. If you like what you heard, leave us a review. You can do so on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, frankly, anywhere else. And if you haven't already, subscribe. You'll get new fantastic conversations like this one delivered directly to your device. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to this episode of Retail Remix. Be sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode. You can find us on your favorite podcast player. Until next time, keep mixing it up.